Hello. I'm glad you could be with me today in the Unfolding the Word ministry. As you know, we've been working our way through 1 John. We're now in the fourth chapter, and I want to pick up our reading today there. I'm going to actually start in verse 1 of that fourth chapter and then read on through verse 5. We've begun to look at this section together already. Listen to these words. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they're from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus Christ is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We've been talking about the issue of false teaching. The fact that not everyone claiming to speak for God, not everyone claiming to be a Christian speaker, actually is. Uh, not everyone who claims to be part of Christianity actually is a true teacher of God's word. We need to understand that. Many false teachers have gone out into the world. There were false prophets in the Old Testament, false teachers in the New Testament. Many will be trying to mislead the believers, direct them away from the Lord. God warns us of that reality. And he tells us, like the Bereans in Acts chapter 17, listening to Paul's message for the first time, he challenges us to be like the Bereans and check the word to see if the message aligns with the word of God. In fact, God gives us in these opening verses of the fourth chapter three important questions to ask that will help us to diagnose false teachers, separating them out from true teachers. We looked at the first of those questions yesterday. What do they say about the incarnation? What is their view of the message, as John chapter 1 puts it, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and God, and the Word was God? And then in verse 14, and that Word became flesh and dwelt among us. What do they say about the incarnation? It will always be a distinctive of a false teacher that in some way they will be denying or downplaying or obscuring the truth of the incarnation. The second of the questions which we'll look at today is how does the world, the secular culture around us, view their teachings? The third question, which Lord willing we'll look at tomorrow, is what do they really believe, these false speakers, what do they really believe about the Word of God? Three critical questions. Today, as I say, our focus is on question two. How does the world view their teaching? He says in verse five, they are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world and the world listens to them. How does the world, the secular culture around us, view a particular teacher? We ought to always be cautious if the secular fallen world that surrounds us in this life is praising a speaker, a teacher, who claims to be a teacher of God's word. It doesn't always indicate false teaching, because certainly at times the integrity of a speaker and in in the effectiveness of a Bible teacher is recognized even begrudgingly by the world. Think of some of the respect that many in the world gave to Billy Graham in the United States, for example. So it isn't always a measure that there's a problem. But we should always examine carefully the teaching of someone that the world praises, that the world listens to. Why? Because God's truth is normally resisted by the world, by the secular fallen mankind. That's been true since Genesis chapter 4 onward. The world, in rebellion against God, ultimately hates what God has to say. They want the darkness rather than the light. False teachers who are giving the picture, the claim that they are speaking for the God who is really there, is 
are in fact not speaking for that God. They might appear religious, they might appear spiritual, but they are in fact worldly, much more in harmony with the world fallen culture around them than they are with God. And he tells us in verse 5 that there are two factors to consider when we try to test them out. Again, making sure that we're assessing carefully a false teacher. The first of them, it says, is that the world listens to them. The world listens to them. The word listen here, akuo in the Greek, means to listen to something in the sense of obeying it or heeding it or agreeing with it. It's not just that you've heard something, but that you're aligning with it. The world culture, that world that God commands us not to be conformed to, that world that he tells us love for the world is a problem and proves that we do not have love for God, as the second chapter of 1 John helped us to understand. He says, if the world system, the culture, the society around you accepts some teaching, that should be a reason to be concerned. When an individual has public popularity, recognition, people look to them for advice and guidance, we should be cautious. It may be that they are still true despite that, and that alone would not be evidence to convict them, so to speak, but it's certainly a reason for you and I to be very concerned and careful around somebody who is claiming to speak for God and yet finds great acceptance and respect within the world around us. So he says, first of all, we can look and if how does the world view them? Secondly, he says, they are of the world or from the world, therefore they speak from the world. They speak from the world. What that means is that the things that they say are ultimately rooted in the worldview around them. They're ultimately viewed it in the way, rooted in the way humanity sees something, not the way God sees something. They ultimately reflect the viewpoint of the world in the things that they teach. And therefore, their message, whether it has religious words and phrases in it or not, ultimately aligns with the belief that the world already holds. Their message, in other words, is no threat to the world. And when you have a message that's no threat to the world, that isn't calling for anybody to turn and repent of their sin and turn back to God and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. If your message doesn't say that, then you're not unsettling the world at all. And the world will be happy with your message. It's the person who says, wait, we are sinners and separated from God. There's no solution. We need to repent and believe. If you're living out of harmony with God's word, you're wrong and you need to repent and change. That's the type of individual the world doesn't like. But these teachers, these false teachers, the world likes. Uh, their message ultimately aligns in some fundamental way with the things the world already believes. It reinforces rebel humanity's beliefs. And God says, a false teacher, first of all, will be known because they are denying the incarnation in some fashion. Secondly, they're going to be known because, number one, the world is listening to them, feeling positive about them. And number two, the message they are actually telling us is essentially the world's message. A lot of people try to make their Christianity contemporary by borrowing the world's ideas and trying to make them sound Christian. That's the problem he's talking about here. Now, the promise is that the Holy Spirit who is within us is greater than he was in the world. Then the Holy Spirit who is in us as believers will protect us from such people, such false teachers. Even if the world sees them as important, even if the world is praising them, God will make us uncomfortable. The Holy Spirit will make us unsettled when we listen to them. We might not find every word they say is unsettling, but the Holy Spirit will make us ill at ease in the presence of those people. It's a safety device for the believer. But God won't force us as his children to listen to the safety device. God will not force us to act on the cautionary message of the Holy Spirit. If you and I continue to listen to a false teacher, 
our discernment will gradually diminish and we will become increasingly dulled in our spiritual sensitivity. There is great danger in continuing to listen to someone who is ultimately a false teacher. No matter how sincere, no matter how interesting, and no matter how positively the world around us views their message, God says it is dangerous. Well, Lord willing, tomorrow we'll turn to the third question that helps us to discern, and that's the question, what does this teacher really believe about God's word, the scriptures? Join me then, won't you? God bless.